What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Season 7 of NHL 22 Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode Series. If you guys missed the last episode, unfortunately, we still are without a Stanley Cup. It actually went to the Philadelphia Flyers last year. Now, we did make the playoffs at least last season, uh, just of course could not bring home the Stanley Cup, nor did we make the conference final. I actually don't think we made it past the second round yet. Hopefully, we can break that this episode. Number 7 is my lucky number, so let's get it done. Our first line here is now Johnny Goudreau, Austin Matthews, and Johnny Petrovicki. So a couple of Johnnies there with Matthews. Petrovicki, new player, has an X Factor there. Great shot on him. Uh, Schneid there, the zone ability. So I'm hoping that line plus five can play really well. Second line here is Matthew Savoy, Trevor Zegers, and Mariko Severson. Solid second line there. Yanni Gordon, Nikon, and Zucker on the third line. And then we have Ratcliffe, Pinto, and Heponyemi on the fourth. Our bomb six has definitely gotten worse, but they're all still 80 pluses. I feel like they'll be fine. Defensively here is a lot better. So Theodore Girard is the top pair again at plus five. They're playing like 94 and 91 respectively. I think Theodore actually went back up in rating. I want to say he dropped all the way to an 87. Now he's an 89 again. Ekblad Halvertson here on the second pair. They'll be playing like a 91, 83. And then we have Luf Regula on the bottom pair. Ekblad, of course, a big trade we made. I think, you know, bringing him in, our defense is so, so solid. In terms of the goaltending, Luckin in there is our starter. Dostal, very good backup at 84. Now, special teams here. I decided to switch it up. So, you guys will see here, the first power unit actually gets a plus three, and so does the second. So, a four was a plus five and a zero. I was able to get two plus threes. I think this is more balanced. If the first unit's tired because they were just out there, a lot of the first line players are on it, then the second unit can go out. Now, I could make it a plus five on the first line, I think, adding Gerard, but again, a plus five and a zero. I think two plus three is equal six. More balance should be better overall. Four man here is a plus five and a zero. So when the four man's out there, hopefully it's that unit one and they just dominate. PK here is a plus two and a zero. Looks pretty solid. Three man's a zero minus one. Best I could do, but I'll take it. Overall, I'm very happy with how the NHL team looks. Real quick, guys, I want to thank Bounty Sports for sponsoring today's video. They're a daily fantasy sports platform that's switching things up with a simple and easy to use pick em style opposed to the regular fantasy lineup. I find their method a lot easier to win and Honestly, I've been enjoying it so far. Signing up is really easy. It takes about 10 seconds. And if you use my code TACTICS, you'll actually get $5 for free, no deposit necessary. So without spending a dime, you can potentially win some big prizes. Now, once you guys have your $5, you want to choose a contest to enter. You can see here they have a variety of sports, but obviously I'll be going with NHL. You also have a bunch of different entry fees ranging from $3 to $30 and prizes there from $45 to $810. I think there was an NFL one on the front page I saw almost 2,000. So there can be some really big prizes. I'm just gonna keep it simple here with the $5 NHL Pick'em. So it's really easy, guys. They're gonna have some games from that night. You can see here, eight games total. You're gonna choose who you think is gonna win each game. The favorite only gives you one point. The underdog gives you more than one. You try and get the most total points. Starting off here, guys, game one. Florida's undefeated, so the fact that they're the underdog, I think makes me have to pick them. I really like the Jets over the Sharks, especially as the underdog. I think the Jets are a much better team. Devils, Penguins. That's probably 50-50. Penguins are at home, but again, I think the Devils there. The Red Wings, Leafs. <laughs> this is a tough one. I feel like the Leafs probably win. You can see that they are, you know, quite favored. The Red Wings give you 2.2 points. My favorite team. I feel like it's worth the risk to try and, you know, double up. Uh, Chicago, St. Louis. I like St. Louis at home for that one. Colorado, Minnesota. I also like Colorado being the Minnesota Wild at home. Um, I like Edmonton there over the Canucks. I actually like the Flyers over the Flames, especially at 1.38. And if I go to the bottom here, you'll see my maximum points are 10.2. So. Hopefully I do you know, get that 10.2 because if I do, I'm definitely going to be in the money. I'll actually show you guys. So the NHL pick them here, prize pool, $225. First place gets you 50 bucks. Um, prizes placed all the way to 10th. Again, there's only 50 people being entered. So 20% chance to be in the money. So if you guys are interested at all, click the link in the description box below and use my code tactics for a free $5 when you sign up. Again, no deposit necessary. Highly recommend giving Bounty Sports a try. Now guys, let's get back to the video. HL team here. Try one another color cup. I mean, they have some pretty good players. I signed this Ward dude just for the shot, 99 everything, but slap shot power, 94 hand eye, fast as well, and somehow has amazing stick checking aggressiveness. Um, Hutton in there is like a worst version of him. Better hand eye, but uh, you can see the wrist shot power is not there, nor does he have the speed, only the endurance, which is kind of weird. Uh, defensively, they're pretty solid, led by Wallander. A couple X factors there on the bottom pair. In terms of goalies for the AHL team, we have Fratton starting, A2 overall, medium elite. Hopefully they'll grow and at least be our backup next year, if not even our starter. Special teams for the AHL team, I actually want to show you guys four-man power play here. I've never seen it so bad. I should have recorded, but it was actually a minus five, the worst minus you can have, and a minus three before I started tinkering with it. Minus two for both was the best I could get. The PK though is very good, two plus three. So I'm thinking I'll have to look at our coaches. They're probably like very defensive heavy and not offensive heavy or something like that, because that's really, all that makes sense to me. 
Um, in terms of the captain tier here, guys, I asked you who I should make the new alternate captain. Yanni Gord still wears a C, Austin Matthews still wears an A, and I decided to give the new A to Shea Theodore. Obviously, Matthew Beniers used to wear that, but we traded him away. Um, so you guys want to take a quick look at the record book, see how that's looking to start this season. I feel like there actually might be a new point leader. No, never mind. Johnny Goudreau is still first, 379. It has Yanni Gord and Kelly on model there, tied for the most seasons. So Gord will set that record after this one. Beniers there still has the most goals, 163. And Grubauer still has all the goalie records, but I feel like Lekin could definitely pass them. So before we start swimming here, guys, I'm going to show you the overalls here, offense, defense, and goaltending. So we have 97 offense, 90 defense, 88 goaltending. You can see there, three guys, all his own abilities. This is the best team I think we've had yet. Hopefully they can uh, find a way to get it done and win us a cup. So at the Christmas break here, guys, we're doing okay. We're 18, 14, and 5. Technically negative if you count the OT losses. Matthews is playing well, 44 and 37. 41 points, ties us for wildcard spot, but Oilers and Canucks both have played less games. So we need to start playing a little bit better here towards the trade deadline if we want to be a legit playoff contender. And we're now at the trade deadline here, guys, the record of 33, 24, and 6. Definitely a streaky team. Like we won five straight, and then we proceeded to lose four straight, or sorry, three straight, but um, it's weird. Like, we're up and down. I think we were in a playoff spot, wildcard there, 72 points. Tied with the Oilers, actually, for third in the Pacific, but again, uh, they have less games played. Matthews there, 66 and 63, so continues to play at a point per game pace, or actually just above that. So we get to the trade deadline here. I think like the last four years, we're a conservative buyer. Like this team, for whatever reason, I don't think it's ever been a dominant team. You know, first in the division by far, not just destroying everybody. Dougie Hamilton's available. Uh, one year left there on his $9 million contract with the Devils. Dylan Larkin, five years left, $11 million. Shea Theodore, I did not put him on the block. That would be my assistant GM, that's funny. I always find it funny when you see your own players on the trade deadline block and you're like, I did not put them there. Same goes for Ekblad. I guess he wants to shed some salary because they're both making 11 million. Really, with those two guys, our team should be playing better, especially with Girardi getting a plus five. Um, Say and Smith, they also have Goudreau there. Does he think we're like a seller or something? Uh, Joachim Kamel, 87 overall, won the Calder, no contract. I feel like I have to trade for him. Just for the memes. All right, guys, so I wasn't kidding. I'm trying to get Kamel here from the Vancouver Canucks, offering up first round pick in next year's draft, not this one. Cast Price is just there for the contract spot, 2172, medium bomb six. Dostal there, backup goalie. I feel he's got a little bit of value. Frack could definitely be the new backup. And honestly, might even trade Lekkinen to save some money in the summer and have Frack be the starter on, and on a much cheaper contract, especially you know if he does play well as the backup. We'll see what the Canucks say to this. Trades rejected. Value just isn't there whatsoever. I feel like it's probably close. We'll try adding a second round pick this year as well. It's a lot to give up, but I mean, Joachim Kamel won the Calder. His shot there, you can see both 99 power. He's a really good player. Trades rejected. Okay, honestly, I don't know if I want to spend much more than that. I do have to give a new contract this summer. I don't really know how much space we'll have. Now, speaking of, you know, 99 shots, I wanted to show you guys this. Eugene Ward, one of the guys we signed with like the crazy shot. Literally a cheat code. Check this out. 62 games played, 68 goals. I had to do a double take when I first saw that. I was like, did I read that right? 10 assists there. Are you He's averaging over a goal per game in the AHL. I mean, when you see his shot, no wonder why. He's 74 overall. He better grow. If not, like, I just don't understand this game. All right, guys, we got like 30 minutes left here at the trade deadline. and try and get Hampus Lindholm from the Blues. 50% retained, 84 overall, a couple of X factors. Luf here is going to want a big raise, even though he's only 84 overall. Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Also, I think Dostal again. I think Frank could be the backup. Pretty equal value. Trades rejected. I feel like we're close. I should have time to kind of, you know, lowball them a bit here. We'll try a third, and then if that doesn't work, we'll try a second. Third round pick works. Fran's getting called up. There we go. So, only trade made the deadline, but again, we were in a kind of limbo state. I don't really want to go all out here in case we play bad and miss, but... Adding Hampus Lindholm, our top four is absolutely stacked. And the trade deadline is now complete, guys. We'll see if any blockbusters went down. We actually made the last trade of the day. Uh, Minnesota there gets Devin Taze. Toronto traded Alex Wenberg to the Lightning. Miles Wood goes to the Canadians. Alex Romanoff, the Jets. Morgan Geeky to the Devils. Let's see here. Kershev to the Golden Knights. Heronic goes to Washington. They seem to take all the Red Wings players. Josh Anderson to Boston. To Foley to the Senators. Kukkonen to the Senators as well. I thought that was Jake Sanderson for a second they traded, but it was Jimmy Sanderson, okay. Pesci there to the Coyotes. Robert Thomas to the Kings. Uh, Valino to the Islanders. What is Detroit doing trading him? Um, Hayek goes to Edmonton. Pionk and Edmonton to LA. Valimaki to the Islanders. Let's see. Tyler Sagan to the Pittsburgh, or sorry, to the Columbus Blue Jackets from the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's a big trade. Obviously, Pittsburgh must have signed him as a free agent. 
Devils here trade Nolan Foot and Alexiev uh, for a couple players there I've never heard of. Done there goes the Predators. So uh, I guess Sagan was the biggest trade of the day. Nothing too crazy. All right, guys. So after the trade deadline, you an updated look at the lines. Of course, forward group looks the same. Defensively, we actually have Lindholm on the bottom pair. Him and Regula together get a plus two. So. Our defense is looking pretty good. Plus five, plus three, plus two. It's the best chemistry we've had yet. It's also the best group of defense we've had yet. Like in terms of just overalls, that would be, or I guess this would be our top four. Like, are you kidding me? Like that is so solid. Hopefully these guys can play well. I'm trying to think. Lindholm's on the PK, the second unit, as well as the second three-man unit. So um, help with the PK, helps with the bottom pair. I feel like we didn't really pay that much for him. And I'll start the same here and see whether or not adding Lindholm is enough to keep us in the playoff picture. All right, guys, so regular season is over. As you can see, they were playing the Calgary Flames in the first round of the playoffs. We played them a couple times now. Hopefully, we can get by them. Um, unfortunately, I simmed like an extra day there. So uh, Matthews finished with 94 points in the regular season. Great season for him. Goudreau, 84. So both these guys over a point per game. Petrovicki there at 70, playing on our top line. Should continue to grow. We got him locked up long term. Yang Gord, 57 at 36. Uh, pretty good seats from the captain. Why does it say he had 12 games played? Not sure what that is. Maybe that's like his last playoff or something because the playoffs have started. Zegers 56 isn't bad. Minus 17 though is kind of rough. Uh, Gerard 56. Savoy 53. Also kind of a big minus there at 16. Theodore Ekblad definitely helping us out. Cyberson 42 for more of a two-way guy. I think I'll take that. Goaltending wise, Pekka Lekkinen, 40 wins there. 0 0.909 to 2.8. I think that's better than last year. Fratton there only played four games. Didn't have great stats, but... Uh, very, very small sample size, so it's kind of tough to, you know, really judge from that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Our AHL team, Josh Hosang had 108 points in 82 games in the AHL. He might win AHL scoring race. He's just, you know, the perfect AHL player, it seems. Magnuson, even, I wasn't expecting this, 104 and 82. He's 80 overall. I mean, he's got a powerful shot, but it's not very accurate. Yeah, really, stats, nothing to write home about. I feel like he's got to grow after that season. And, of course, Eugene Ward, 86 goals in 82 games. Over a goal a game, this guy, 98 points, only 12 assists because his passing's crap, but 94 hand eye, he's just clapping one timers, I guess. And as I mentioned before, he's also got you know a few other stats that he's really good at. Very curious to see what his growth is gonna be like. He's still a 74, he's gonna win the AHL scoring title. Kill Thomas there, almost a point per game as well. Lapierre 71, like AHL team basically just one I have fun with, and it seems to be working out. Uh, Bjorklund there after the trade deadline went 23, 5, and 2. No shutouts, a point 901 of 2.61, which isn't too bad. McPherson, okay, so you guys don't know yet. He's 2-2 two and two at a point nine one five or 2.1. Much better stats than Borkland. This guy's 58 overall. Like, what the heck? Goalie stats just don't matter at all, it seems. Um, we'll take a look at the entire NHL here, and I guess we'll do standings last. Pasternak there, 115 points, led the league in points. Picking in there, 109. Debrink at 109. Picking in, I think, yeah, went second overall in 2022. Right behind Shane Wright, I remember that. Uh, McDavid 107, Strom 107, Zabanajad, big year for him, he's on Calgary of course, Kublik, Kucherov, Johnson there, taking a look at defenseman next, Adam Fox 81 points there on the wild, I really wish we would have just paid the extra money to get him, Luke Hughes there of course, and now a New York Islander, Rasmus Dallin signed with the Senators, rookie skaters, Waka Bayashi, I, I probably butchered that, 47 there, uh, Soderstrom 46, okay, I don't think we had any rookie, doesn't look like it. Now, in terms of goalies, Peluso on the Flames most wins. Okay, this Flames team might be pretty good. Best save percentage for a starter, Burkvist here on the Penguins, 0.91. And best goals against for a starter looks to be Ukapak Lekkinen, 2.8. Wow, look how big it jumps. I guess, you know, I do have the Sim Engine that's set to higher scoring, but I also have it set to higher shot, so I thought that would fix it. Obviously, guys, we're in the playoffs. Uh, we got a wild card spot, 95 points. Flames there had 111. That is going to be tough. Um, second place in the NHL behind the Lightning. We finished 12th there. Pittsburgh Penguins squeak into the playoffs in the 18th spot. And last in the NHL is the Washington Capitals. Interesting. So goals four. Um, Calgary's first in the league. This is going to be a tough test for us. As long as we're not at the bottom, we're not. Uh, goals against Calgary is also first. We were fourth, so definitely adding all those defensemen helped out. Um, okay, this... We are in tough, that is for sure. I'm curious, AHL team... First place in the league again, 124 points. Like, looking at how good our players did, I kind of figured that, but I did just want to double check to be sure. And the entire league, Blake Coleman actually won the scoring title, 109, one more than Hosang. That sucks, but Ward there, 86. Dominic Krause on Syracuse actually came close. Wow, look at his shot too. There's another guy with a crazy shot, hand-eye. 
He's basically like a worse version of Ward. 77 overall, though, he's higher rated and younger, but uh, Ward there went off for us. So we'll see if the AHL team can get it done and win us on their Calder Cup. We'll start here, though, with the playoff sim against the Flames. We already know this is a very good team. They're letting goals for and against. The Banjo and the top scorers in the league. Uh, him, Kachuk, Phillips, very solid first line. Brown, Stamkos, and, of course, Matthew Beneers. Uh, he's going to want revenge on us, I think. Mangiapane's still there. Dubé. Uh, they got a couple 70s, but they're a good team. Jacob Chikrin, that's right. They signed him. That is a solid defense, although ours is way better. I don't know what the chemistry is like. Peluso there, 87 overall at 23, medium elite. First round pick, 2024. Really bad backup, but he probably won't be going into the game that much. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a tough test for sure. I am curious, because they were like such a dominant team. How do we rate in terms of like our overalls? Because I'm wondering what it is this team is missing. So, uh, I already know our overalls. I'll freeze it for you guys here as it keeps going away, but they have three less offense and two less defense, and their goal is much worse, but it's basically just because they have such a bad backup, so I don't know if that counts. Again, though, I think our ratings are there. We'll see what happens. First two games are in Calgary, and we lose both of them. 4-3, three, 3-0. Three, Heading home now. Please don't get swept. 5-2 win. 6-4 win. Okay, we answer back. Back-to-back -back wins. Going to Calgary. Can we get a win away? Can't seem to win away. Heading home to Seattle. Season's on the line. Come on, boys. We need a hero. Game 6. 1-1, one, one, Matthews Banajad. 2-2, two, two, Matthews Dubé. Please, I want this to be a historic run. If we can win this one, I feel like we could win Game 7. It's coming down to the wire here. Exact equal shots. I was going to say very close shots. Both 31. No one's had a shot for a few minutes for some reason. There we go. Uh, Kyrie got one shot in the power play. Is this thing going to go to overtime? And it is. We'll just send the period. We'll see who wins it. And there we go. Johnny Goudreau on his old team. Finds the back of the net. Forces a game seven. Hopefully we can rally behind that win. And move on to the second round. Here we go. That's not good. <laughs> Beneers with two. He hates us. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we did score three. Uh, Petrovic with a couple on his old team. Severson with one. But down six there heading to the third. is, is basically no chance. All of that just to count in the first round. AHL team here, also in the first round, are you kidding me, the Chicago Wolves, so doesn't matter, I guess, we dominated the regular season, or just weekend as a wildcard team, no luck so far in the playoffs at all. And the draft results just came in, guys, New York Rangers picking first overall, jumped up from 6-1, to one. Montreal there jumps from 4-2, to two. no idea, you know, who the best prospects are yet, haven't looked at the draft class, you might have saw there, Tampa Bay Lightning win the Stanley Cup, Petrovicki. He had a series against the Flames. I thought Beneers hated us. It looks like he hates Calgary more. They didn't make him sit an entire year. Two points a game he averaged for us. 14-7. and seven. I, We let him down. He's now an 88 overall. Matthews there, 12-7. and seven. He's back to being a 94. We draw also over a point per game. They just didn't have any help. Zegers 5-7 and seven isn't too bad. And then everyone else there put up two points. Like, literally no depth. Lekkanen needs to be played better than that, if we're being honest. So... I don't know. Yeah, the first line played well, but just no help for them. Let's see. Tampa Bay beat the Penguins in six, Leafs in seven, Flyers in six, and then the Oilers in seven. Okay, so good battle of Alberta there. Second round, Edmonton beat Calgary in four. Sure, that was fun to see. Awards here, Tampa Bay Stanley Cup after, you know, back-to-back -back, uh, five years ago. They also won the President's Trophy, so they cleaned house this year. Individual here, Pashnak, Art Ross also won the Heart. Quinn Hughes, James Norris, back-to-back -back years. Three times in four years. That's insane. Pashnak also got the Lady Bing. Wakabayashi there, Calder Trophy, Kucherov, Khan Smythe, uh, Lekkinen won the Vesna again, wow, just because that goal's against, and I didn't think he's like played that great for us, like that's crazy, Peluso there of course, William M. Jennings for the Flames, oh, two young there, used to be in our AHL defense, I was hoping he wasn't going to show up anymore because I suck at saying his name, wins a Bill Masterton for Vegas, are you kidding me, uh, Arizona coach Jack Adams, Aho with the Selkie, that's an interesting one, Pashnak also won the Ted Lindsay, and then Kent Johnson there actually won Risha Shart, I didn't even realize that, that's kind of crazy because he's more of a playmaker than a scorer. Also, guys, totally forgot to check AHL awards. Grand Upper Griffins there won the Calder Cup. Fourth straight year of us winning the regular season, but really all that matters is that Calder Cup. So Blake Coleman beat out Hosang by one point for most points. Hosang, though, won MVP, which is cool. Ward, of course, most goals. He crushed it. Also got outstanding rookies. So no team had even given him a chance yet. That is crazy. He better grow after this season. Muzzin there, best D-man. Uh, Senin, best goalie. Dumai, uh, MVP, Hosang also got sportsmanship, Nielsen, community involvement, and then Sen in there, lowest goals against. And I just quickly wanted to check goals, so Kent Johnson had 59 there, again, shot is like nothing crazy at all, if you look at Kucherov's, uh, so much better, both accuracy and power, so 
Uh, we'll get to the draft now, guys. I feel like, I don't know, Petrovic there. What a beast. Two points a game in the playoffs. I guess we're just going to try and add depth. You know, with hopefully we have some really good AHL players coming through because the AHL team, you know, the better they do, the more players will grow, and hopefully um, some cheap players can come up from that team. Stammer there retires as a Calgary Flame. Giroux on a Vegas Golden Knights. Perron, Couture, whole career with Sharks. Mark Stone, Brent Gallagher, Vander Kane there. Tyson Berry, interesting. Trangelo, Jordan Everly finally calls it quits. So uh, that's a tough one for us. We didn't bring him back and nobody signed him because he was asked for way too much money. Roman Yossi, Troy Krug, Radulov. Um, again, like I say this, I think, you know, the last four or five years in retirement, but every day, I mean, Charlie's just trying to retire here. Varlamov, Bobrovsky, a couple of solid Russian goalies. Uh, some guys are more, you know, tandems and backups. So we're at the draft now, guys. I'm going to take a look at this draft class. Wow. Friesen there is a gem. Medium franchise first overall. Helping me out so much. Whitney there, third overall, another gem. Like, are you kidding me? Um, 69, that's a bit of a gem. Nice. Guaranteed low top four, though. Like, he's not that great. Ranta here, though, 103. Yes, that's a guaranteed medium elite. That's the kind of player we're looking for. Um, any other guaranteed medium elites that are going to go late does not look like it. Also, you got to see here, after the guaranteed medium elites, it's all 50-50, and I've learned... Uh, it's not good enough, so unless it's like, you know, three or four dashes, I'm not even going to bother painting them. Like this Corvo guy here, probably low elite, not going to go to 240, that's a solid pick. So just send our pick in the second round, guys, don't really think I can move anything for it first. Uh, freezing there, 81 overall, medium franchise went first overall, the Rangers. Uh, you got your kind of standard high 70 medium elites. Just looking here to see if any steals were had, it does not look like it. So, hopefully we get a good pick here. I'm actually not sure, yeah, like in this range, 52. I don't think there's anybody really for us to take. Um, could take the guaranteed low top four defenseman as a gem. What's his NHL ETA? Four years. How is this guy a gem? Like that seems like he's not that great. You guys can see here all the players I want to take are like such lower rated. Uh, the guaranteed me and leads not till 102. So I might actually trade this pick, move back a little bit. I'm going to see if the Rangers will give me a second round pick next year with a fifth this year. And they say no to that. I feel like hopefully you can get, you know, a pick out of them. As, like I said, I don't really like anyone right now. They still say no. Let's just take the second next year. There we go. Okay, like I said, if there wasn't anyone I wanted right now, I'd rather just wait. Our next pick here, guys, number 84 in the third round. I'm just going to take the guaranteed medium elite right now. Play it safe in case anyone tries to steal them from us. Miko Ranta. Sounds very similar to Miko Ranta in both finished wingers. Uh, both lead potential. 54 overall grinder. So he's much lower rated and he's also a grinder, but... I'll take that. Now our next pick is number 97. Um, I guess the next one to be up would be this Whiting guy. He's probably low top four. Um, there's two guys low top four. Dyka, guaranteed medium starter. But we also have Zednik there, guaranteed medium starter. So uh, I'll go with Johan Whiting. Hopefully he's decent. Uh, 63 overall, low top six. That's all right. Our next pick here, guys, is in the fifth round. Um, I guess I'll take Dyka, the guaranteed medium starter goalie. Uh, we actually have a chance to get another medium starter. He's 52 overall, so... Very low rated, what you're going to do. Um, the seventh round. Now, I think I have two seventh rounders. And both guys I had pinned are gone. I thought they were late 200s. Apparently not. I'll take a chance on Roach. 50-50, medium elite. Keith Roach, medium bottom six. Come on. For my last pick, guys. I'm just going to take this Jameson Pekka dude. He might be medium elite. Uh, this other guy is like a grinder. So, yeah, I don't know. From Norway, let's see. 7th D. I mean, second last pick in the draft. We really had to get lucky there. Alright guys, we're not the re-sign phase here. As you can see, we only have 7.2 million in cap space, but that's because most of our players are locked up. Like you can see there, all the top players are under contract. Yanni Gord's the best one without a contract. He wants 5 million for 2 years. He's a 36 year old. That's tough. I want to bring the captain back, but that's going to be pretty expensive. So, um, looking at the forwards, Jason Zucker's probably gone. Yeah, 82. I feel like someone else can take his place. I killed Thomas even, honestly. He was in the AHL. Make Aaron 50k. He had a big year too, so I feel like why not just bring him up to the NHL. Nick in here, 82, wants just under 2 million, so let him go as well. Um, Isaac Ratcliffe, what's he want? 2 million dollars. I'm sure we can find, you know, low 80s for Aaron 50k again this summer. Reese there was in the AHL, he wants 1.2, he'll be gone. Uh, Shane Pinto, but it's the same thing, yeah. If they're over a million bucks, it's not worth it. Magnuson had like 105 points in the AHL, so he'll get his contract. Um, Pinto and Reese though, both going to be gone. I was saying obviously we're going to bring back AHL All-Star. Uh, it was actually kind of funny, I was looking at it. So Ward here, 86 goals, hasn't grown at all yet. Even Hutton in there, 49 goals, also hasn't grown. We'll see if that changes um, by the start of next season. Now in terms of our defense, the top three there are locked up. A lot of money, it's about 30 million there for three defensemen. Lindholm, what's his price? Just under five, I just can't do it. 
Uh, Wallander's there under contract for 800k. Halvardsson, I'd like to bring back. Hopefully he's cheap again. 2.3 million. Okay, so I'm just going to have to qualify him. Regula was pretty cheap last year. He wants 2.3 though. I just can't do that. So I guess we're losing Regula, but maybe one of these guys that we have here will grow, or if not, uh, sign somebody else cheap in free agency. And then finally, goalies. Lekkinen's locked up. Fratton's a new backup. 1.2 for one. That's actually really fair. Two years doesn't change. Three years it goes up. So let's try... 1.1 for two years. I'll probably say yes. I also feel like we got to keep the captain Yanni Gord. So off from four and a half million there. And as you guys can see here, I've actually fired our HL head coach. That's funny. It's a pop up. Uh, basically, I needed the money to sign our NHL head coach. And I don't even know if it's worth signing our NHL head coach, but I like to do that to keep the record and stuff. As well, like our AHL chemistry was so weird. I actually cleaned house. I fired everyone but the goalie coach in the AHL. So bringing in all new guys. Gord, the captain, wants to test free agency. Are you kidding me? Hosang, Magnuson, Fratton there. Try 475 for Gord. And there we go. He comes back. So we're only going to have 3.3 million to work with. Again, uh, we're going to be bargain hunting for sure. And off the free agency period here, guys. Like I said, didn't really have a lot of guys to resign. 3.4 million. Pitkin in there. 91 overall. Wants almost 15 million. I mean, the dude had, what, 109 points last year, I think that is. Uh, great player there from the Coyotes. Alex Newhook's up to a 90. Pavel Zak up to an 89. That's kind of surprising. Michkov there is 92. What's his shot looking like? Honestly, it didn't grow as much as it did in NHL 21. I'm pretty sure it was very similar, like the starting out stat. Maybe just because he has that extra year, um, 21, in, before the draft compared to this year. Phillips there on Calgary, 85 overall. Really wants to get paid playing well for them. Soderstrom, Schubert, Smith. Obviously cannot afford any of these guys. Tyler Sag in there. Um, we'll take a look at goalies. I do need an AHL goaltender. Saros wants 10 million as an 85. Wow. Peluso, that's the other Flames goalie. So maybe the Flames dynasty is over. Looks like the you know the price are catching up to them. Spencer Knight, 88. Only want 6.8. Stats, though, we're not too, too great. Um, we'll take a look here. Like I said, two-way goalies. Get ourselves an AHL goalie. Um, Molden, 20-58, low elite. I guess I could sign to sign, but uh, he's actually not going to be the guy we're going to be rocking with. Lennox, 25-74. Also isn't very great. And then there's no home potential. So... Let's see. I guess this Filatov guy will have to be our AHL backup, 2476. Uh, literally, he's just filling a role, so I'm not going to be paying him much money at all. Uh, we also need an NHL defenseman. Uh, 70 overall, we could get for two way. Dougie Hamilton, 90 overall. Usually, defensemen two are the really expensive thing in free agency. Although, Randall here, 1.775, 23 is an RFA. I mean, we have to take a chance at that. Because uh, he's the only one we can actually afford. So I'm going to offer him $2 million one year, one way. Third round pick, I'll say yes. I actually saw there's another one here, Santala. Uh, $1.5 million. These guys, good potential already. 80 should grow. I'm wondering, I could probably get away with not giving up anything. Like, what's $1.8 million? No picks required. I assume both teams match, but, like, you know, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Now looking at two way forwards here, guys. There's this Ritu dude, 2056, low elite. Uh, we'll get him signed. Zach Dean, 2578, it's not too bad. Uh, I could probably, you know, join the AHL team somewhere. Fabian Lysel's an RFA, otherwise I'd go for that. Uh, Laharu there, course check. Lee McCullum, 2478. I'll give him a contract for sure. And look at this, guys. Emil Bemstrom is a free agent. I feel like we have to sign him, bring him back to the AHL team. He's an absolute stud for us. That's awesome. And actually, sorting my overall, I see Jack Quinn's available. He's got one year left to grow. Really good shot about it but uh, I feel like fourth line you can score goals or how about the AHL team I'm good for either all right so Isaac Ritu I think that was a low league guy signed with us same with Malden there the AHL backup goalie I think I might have said his name terrible there Bemstrom comes home he might even make the NHL team this year honestly Jack Quinn joins the team too same with Landon McCollum there Zach Dean as well Santola there one of the defensemen accepted the offer as of now Fingers crossed the team won't match. Filatov here accepted his offer. Sorry, he was the AHL backup. The other goalie was just low elite. As we start to get guys, the Devils there matched our offer to Santola. I'm not sure if the other defense we made an offer on has accepted yet or not. And I'm just looking at two-way players, guys. Check this dude out. Vyashlev Semyonov, 24 years old, Semyon overall, medium toxic potential. The dude is a beast. He's like the guy we have, Eugene, except way better. Uh, he doesn't have any wrist shot power, but the accuracy is insane. Same with the slap shot. He's actually got hands as well. Really good offensive awareness. Like, this guy's all offense. But he also can block shots pretty good, apparently, 88. So, 24-79. I want him locked up. Uh, two other teams interested there. I'll give him the max on two-way, like, $1 million, three years. Hopefully he doesn't get upset because it's not a one-year deal, but 
we get him locked up for that, I think. Play him in the NHL, and he accepted the offer. I'm honestly gonna put him in the NHL and just hope for the best, like hope he just absolutely tees off on teams. So next we're gonna try and get Yoki Hardy from the Carolina Hurricanes. 81 overall, making like no money. We need a guy to fill in our top six. Knutson here is not bad, but only 70 overall at 22. You'd hope for better, plus a fifth rounder. No characters on the block, hopefully they say yes. Trades rejected, I feel like that's gotta be close. Let's try making it a fourth there instead of a fifth. They said sweeten the value just a touch. We'll try just adding a seventh there with the fourth. We'll try adding one of our sixth rounders there with the fourth. And there we go. It's almost the end of July now, guys. Tyler Sagan, Tarasenko, both still available. Same with Silverberg here. 37 years old, but he's still 84 overall. I wouldn't mind doing like one year, three million for him. He'd probably be a third liner for us, but could help us out. If he says no, there's even guys like Fabry, Krasov still available. We have a bit of money. Why not try and improve our bomb six fours a little bit? Since we saw in the playoffs, they didn't really have a lot of depth. Pretty big trade just went down. Bastin and Sharangovic to Ottawa. Hedman in the second rounder to Florida. Obviously, Hedman's older now. Silver though goes with the Wild. I kind of figured that. I'm trying to think here between Krasov and Fabry, who's the better one to have? Probably Krasov, just because he's four years younger. Plus, power forward, you'd think. That would help us with the chemistry. We already have Sony snipers, which is what Fabry gives us. So, let's offer Krasov. He wants three years. Um, we'll do 2.75 for three years just to give us, you know, a decent forward there in the bottom six. And even Chandler Stevenson here, 82 overall, 34 years old. Solid two-way forward. I feel like he's a guy I could plug in, fourth line center maybe. Uh, we'll offer him 1.5, or actually let's try 1.4 for one year because he has 34. In case he doesn't play well or whatever, not, you know, on the hook for that contract. Krasov goes to the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, Yui there was just uh, qualifying off and same with Pars. And Chandler Stevenson goes with the Canucks. Our roster's actually full of crap. So right here, guys, is offering two bottom six potential players to the Leafs for a seventh. They say yes. It's always nice that they do those trades because, honestly, like, you could get probably better players in free agency, but it helps, you know, if you're stuck in terms of contracts. So, overall-wise, what we have left here, we definitely can't afford defensemen. Even though Dougie Hamilton's available, the price has gone down to $8 million. Uh, We're not even halfway to that, though forwards here. Seg is at 6.7. Alright guys, so next year I'm making a risky play offering Samuel Girard to all the centers for Formington in a second. Girard's 86, has some X-Factors, put up, what, 56 points last year as a D-man. Formington's also 86. He had 61 points, I think, if my math's correct. Uh, so a very, you know, pretty similar production, but he's a forward. Now, overall, his stats are all good except for puck skills, essentially a good shock, defense, uh, skating, physical, very cheap $2.1 million salary, but only one year left, asking for a second with that. And then of course, you know, we're saving $6 million here. I'm gonna go get Dougie Hamilton. The thing is, we just have to make sure we do get Dougie Hamilton. I just think with him still available, his price has come down so much, for whatever reason, no one's signing him. We have to take advantage of that. Let's see what the Sanders say. Trades accepted, okay, so that is a big trade. Also too, we bring in a forward, and I was mentioning how we kind of needed a bit of forward depth because we saw in the playoffs we had none. Dougie Hamilton's 35, so he's five years older than Gerard, but we only have three years left anyways. One year, eight million. Two years, eight point seven seven five. Okay, we'll do three years. Actually, that's at least thirty eight. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I guess we'll do one year, kind of see how he plays. Maybe we can get him cheaper or something. I'm gonna do one year, nine million dollars. I mean, it's a million bucks more than he wants. How? Like, are the other teams really outbidding that much? I only have nine point three million to spend. So hopefully, Dougie Hamilton joins our team here. Otherwise. I don't know if I like the trade. He does join the team. Okay, so there we go. I've also got to hope, you know, he gets plus five with Theodore or maybe Ekblad on that top pair. So I think the team's pretty much done at this point. The last month of August here, we're just hoping for growth from everybody and I'll mess up the lines and get ready for next season. And this is some big news, guys. Halbertson accepted his qualifying offer. He's 80 overall, has a couple X factors. Definitely, you know, one of our top six angel defensemen. All right, guys, so it's time to start next season. I just finished editing the lines. Hopefully this team is actually a Stanley Cup contender. We haven't had that yet. Goudreau, Matthews, and Petrovicki still the first line. Matthews now being a 94, so should be playing like a 99 plus 5 chemistry. Petrovicki as well looks to be getting better. Severson, Ziegler, Savoy on the second line. Formantin, Gord, and Thomas on the third. With Bemstrom, Heponiemi, and Anderson Dolan on the fourth. Bemstrom, I thought about putting the AHL, but you know what? He was there for a while. It's time he actually gets called up to the big club. It sucks no chemistry boost for the second, third, fourth line, but it'll have to do. Defensively, Dougie Hamilton Ekblad's actually our top pair now, getting a plus two, and Halvertson and Theodore get a plus five on the second pair. I think this is a bit more of a balanced approach, so Hamilton and Ekblad are playing like 91s, and then Halvertson and Theodore are playing like an 85 and a 91. So I think that'll really help out and like round out the top four. Walner Yuki Harju is a solid bottom pair, I think. In terms of the goaltending, Fratton has grown, so Lekin in there, still 87. Fratton's now an 85. So we always have that option, I guess, to trade Lekkinen, save a lot of money, because Fratton 85 
you know, should be starting goalie. That's his role. But, you know, the four games last year didn't really make me too confident. So I want to kind of wait one season, have him be the backup. Unless, of course, like something crazy comes across where we need the money. Have to trade Lekkanen. AHL-wise, so I didn't spend too, too much time. We got Hosang on the top line there. Uh, for instance, Ward's got to be on that second line. Uh, Semyonov, of course, another guy with a crazy shot. I'm thinking we have all these guys who just score goals. <laughs> that's, that's how the AHL team is going to win the game. Uh, Versi, Georgievic, they're both lower rated, but X factors basically hoping they'll grow. Getting that extra ice time playing on the top pair, plus they get a plus three. Parse, Forsmack, Punnett, Forsberg, solid defense from behind them. Borklin there starting to 79, Philatov backing off 77. So HL team might have like the least amount of A's it's had yet. Still two though, and Madison and Co. And I feel like they should still be a solid team overall. Um, in terms of the captaincy, no changes. It's still Gord wearing the C, Matthews Theodore wearing the two A's. And in terms of the overalls, offense, defense, goal tining, we now have 99 offense, which is pretty awesome to see. 89 defense and 88 goal tending. So hopefully can finally get past the second round and actually make a run to the Stanley Cup. We only got three years left to do it. But you'll have to wait till the next episode to find out. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to the sub button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.